Welcome to Mastermind Gameplay, where we attack first and ask questions later. Today we're going to build another unique spacecraft. Technically, it's an aircraft, but since this is space engineers, we'll call it a spacecraft. Throughout history, there's been a lot of deadly aircraft out there. Ones that will rip right through an adversary. And one of these infamous planes was the A-10 Thunderbolt II or Warthog for short. It's an amazingly small aircraft that carries a heavy-duty Gatling gun, a lot of armor, and a few missiles here and there. The cockpit itself is surrounded by over 1,200 pounds of titanium, reinforcing it from any attack from the ground. Its sole purpose is just to destroy anything that comes in its way. It might not be very fast, but it's very powerful. Now I know this cockpit we're building right now is not as reinforced as 1,200 pounds of titanium, but we work with what we have. For this, I'm just laying out batteries on the bottom. I'm not gonna use any large batteries because this is gonna be a small vessel, so we don't need that much extra power, hopefully. And I'm just going to build the basic tailbone of the aircraft and really just start out by building the framework. Typically, if I'm building a spaceship, I'll start out with a lot of the utility items and such and then build around them. But in this case, since I already know what the design is going to be like, I'm starting out with the framework first and then I'll build the utilities afterwards. Now the A-10 is an interesting aircraft, not only because of its heavy-duty power or its overly armored cockpit, but because of its longevity. It's actually been around since around 1976, and since then has fought in a few small wars and several, several conflicts. There were stories in the day that some of the A-10s, even if they were shot, they could still make it back to their original base. One of them I heard of lost half a wing on the left side and still flew back. That's impressive. These aircraft are fairly short and they were only ever meant for one person. There was, however, I think one modified version just so they could do weather reconnaissance in the A-10. But other than that, it's always been a solo flight, unlike a lot of the fighter aircraft nowadays. You're not really gonna reach high altitudes with this aircraft, unlike say a fighter jet or larger aircraft, but it will swoop down on an enemy and be able to take them out pretty precisely. The tail on an A-10 is basically a fort tail. Instead of being a single vertical epinage or rudder system, it has two sides to the rudder system which are hydraulically driven with a primary and a secondary hydraulic system. So even if it gets shot multiple times and one hydraulic system goes out, the other one is independent enough that it can operate all the controls for it. Worst case scenario, it can be manually flown or controlled back to safety. That looks like most of the blocks for the tail. Now let's just start welding this together.
The A-10 doesn't have as much of a sloped back as most aircraft do. It's a lot shorter, but it is able to take off from a lot shorter runways and become airborne a lot quicker than the larger aircraft. With the stabilizer in the back being much larger and about one third the size of the wingspan itself, this thing is able to grab a lot of air and lift off very quickly. The two large engines on the back that we'll put up next produce most of that forward thrust ability to get off the ground. Let's see in here. I think we'll still make this one nuclear powered just because it takes a lot less space than the hydrogen systems in order to power it. And it would look really tacky if we use solar panels because the solar panels on this game are huge. Hmm, no power. I think it's because I didn't finish the batteries yet. Next, we're just going to put a remote control in case later on we want to just be able to remote control it instead of having to be in the cockpit the entire time. And then a simple antenna in the back. I always have a hard time lining these things up for some reason. We'll just kind of cover this in. And there you have it. That's most of the fuselage done. The tail done. The working components are inside. Now I think we just need to either put the engines or the wings on next. So the engines sit pretty close to the tail. If you look at any of the pictures provided in the Wikipedia link in the description, you'll see that the engines are almost against that tail. I think the large atmospheric thrusters actually worked out pretty good in demonstrating the general design of an A-10. They seem to kind of match the original design of it as the engine size goes. Okay, now for the wings. These wings aren't that long and they're not that stylish. I don't think they curve back at all. They're just more of a rectangle. I think I'll go 11 blocks out on each side and then trim in the rest of it. And almost done with them. Like I said, it's a big rectangle. Not too fancy or anything. Alright, time for the notorious Gatling gun on the front. Now the Gatling gun on the A-10 is so powerful that if it, they keep shooting it, it'll slow the aircraft down. It has that much reverse thrust on that thing every time you fire the shots. Oh, 
hopefully that doesn't happen to us on here. I kind of doubt it will. But imagine a gun being so powerful that it slows you down even when you have huge engines on the back of this thing. There we go. Okay. I think it has either four points for missiles, two on each side, or six altogether. I can't remember, but if you want to look it up, you can always go to the link and read over the information. I'm using rotors here, and if you don't know that you can use these small rotors to basically drop bombs. All you have to do is, when you're sitting in the cockpit, hit the G button, select the rotors, and then on the list of actions that you can specify, I put the detach. Make sure that you arm your warheads first, otherwise it's going to be completely pointless. You'll just drop duds. But in a sense, when you drop them, they should fall right on target and blow up anything that's remaining. Afterwards, from the cockpit itself, you can always select to add a new head or attach a new head. And I believe that was a gyroscope we just lost. Not a big deal, there was two of them when I designed this thing. Double redundancy is key. Just adding a few thrusters so we can get this thing off the ground vertically. As mentioned before, there's not really aerodynamics on Space Engineers, so we do need that vertical thrust. All right, it doesn't look too bad, just the line of gear here and there. And we should be able to test this thing out. Alright, let's see if it crashes when we lower it. Oh, well, it's not too bad. It definitely doesn't have enough force to keep it aloft, though. Probably gonna have to add more thrusters somewhere. Not sure where I can put these things. Maybe around behind the cockpit or something? Yeah, I'll just take this one out and add two on each side of the cockpit, or one on each side of the cockpit. That should give us more lift overall, and hopefully it'll be enough where we can successfully gain altitude and stay at that altitude. Oh, forgot, now I don't have a block there. All right, I mounted two in the back and two in the front. So all together, we should have four thrusters vertically and two large atmospheric thrusters forward. And we have liftoff. Well, as always, thanks for watching, and I hope you leave your tips and tricks in the comment section below. I appreciate it.